Father's Day. I got a couple of cards. One of them I want to share with you. It said, Happy, Father, Happy Father's Day, Dad. Couldn't send a gift this year. I spent all my money on hand sanitizer. All right. Then, <clears throat> the other one well, I couldn't show here, not because there's anything wrong with it, just couldn't get it up, was uh, one that, that said, uh, for example, um, that um, I would come see you this year, but remember social distancing. Now, I have a joke. A young father-to-be was pacing back and forth and wringing his hands and sweat was rolling down his face, and he was in agony as he waited outside for his wife to deliver the child. There had been some complications, and so he was concerned about that. And it had been hours. He had been in the room with her, a delivery room, and yet he had to come out because of those complications. So he was really in agony. At about 4 o'clock in the morning, the nurse came in and said, Congratulations, congratulations. I want you to know that you have a little girl. The new father literally went limp. He let his hands drop down. He said, oh, how I thank God it's a girl. You see, she'll never have to go through the awful agony I've had to go through tonight. Yeah, okay. So anyway... There we go. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about Father's Day a little bit. And every Father's Day is special to all dads, no matter where they are. And today, I would just like to share a few thoughts with you, or suggestions with you, of how, no matter the age of your children, that you can teach your children how to be responsible, loving, caring citizens. And I think the way to do that is through what we call the five principles. The first principle is that there is only one power and one presence, which is the energy of unconditional love in the universe today. What does that mean? You see, it means that what we can be is inclusive. And when we're inclusive, that leads to diversification. And when we have diversification, we have an opportunity to be together, talk together, and to learn about one another. And that means that we end up having open hearts and open minds so that we can teach our children as examples that there is only one power and there is only one presence in their lives, and that is good because it is love. When we experience unconditional love, and many children have and some haven't, but it doesn't mean that we all can't as we work together. And so I say to each father today, understand that there is this one power and one presence. Teach that to your children. No matter what you call God, no matter what you call Jehovah, no matter what words you use to define the Creator, share that with them. Let them understand that it's an energy of unconditional love. The second principle that I would suggest you might share is to help your children discover that life is not a mirror of what you see. But life is the mirror of what you believe and how you show up. It's not what you see going on in the world. But instead, life is a mirror of what you believe. Let them know that they have power through that process. That they are the presence. They are the power. They are an expression of the divine moving out into the human condition and seeing themselves in a way that says, I love myself. It's okay. Tell your children, it's okay to love yourself. And while you do that, it gives you the power to truly love others unconditionally. So remember, 
that your child is developing a screen of life. And you are so important in helping that child develop that screen of life. As they understand that what they believe is the reality, is the truth, is the absolute of who they are. And help them understand how to be in touch with what they believe and not necessarily what they see. The third idea is to let your children know that they have the power to imagine. That <clears throat> through imagination, it allows them to not just dream, but to bring their dreams into reality, to bring their dreams into their lives and allow them to imagine big, to dream big, to become big in all that they do. Encourage them to understand and reflect their feelings in a healthy way. Encourage them to be vulnerable. And it's okay for both men and women. Encourage them to touch one another, except during the CO in the COVID-19 situation, okay? But encourage touching and loving one another in appropriate ways. Encourage discussion in your family. One of the things I had a really wonderful benefit was is that my father worked what they call swing shifts. He worked from 6 to noon, 6 and 1 till noon. Then the next week he would work from noon to 6 o'clock at night, and then the next week he would move 6 o'clock night to, to midnight, and then the next week he would work midnight to 6 o'clock in the morning. And that's how he led probably 15 years of his work life while I was growing up. That was pretty difficult on him. But the one thing that he insisted on, even if we had to do it early, was we had supper together. And that we sat as a family and we talked about things together. We talked about news issues. We talked about all kinds of issues as I was brought up as a child. Openly, and when we disagreed, it was okay. We were encouraged to disagree respectfully. I'll guarantee you that with my father. But we could do that. And it was a wonderful way in which to be brought up as a child and a great example because you see, we were being encouraged to imagine what we were dreaming. We were being encouraged to take that imagination and understand that when we feel what we want, when we understand what we want, when we begin to work towards what we want, that we can demonstrate that. They didn't do it by saying it that way. They did it by allowing us to have fruitful, open discussions about our dreams. I say that about my mother and father both. Although my father happened to be the nurturing one in our family, more so than my mother, even though she loved us very much. The fourth thing I want to do is suggest to you that you teach your children at a young age meditation and affirmative prayer. Meditation teaches them to relax, to maybe not take life too seriously to go within themselves and be comfortable with who they are. And if they're not comfortable, to bring that up and to have the opportunity to change their minds, which obviously changes their life. It is through affirmative prayer that we teach them that you get the most results. We can pray for a positive outcome or we can pray for somebody to fix it for us. More than likely, nobody's going to fix it for you. But when we teach our children through affirmative prayer, they can change again their thinking. They can change their life. They can change what's happening. And that through that affirmative prayer, they learn to set intentions of how to show up. So meditation and affirmation is one of the principles that I would suggest that fathers teach to their children and share with their children if the children are already adults. And then there's the fifth principle. 
And that is to teach our children how to take appropriate action, positive action. You see, action is the key to demonstrating and creating a path to a world that works for all. It's not going to happen if we just talk about it or think about it or say things are getting better and let it go at that. We've already done too much of that. So teach our children. Boy, you know, our young children today, and I'm talking about people under 40, know how to take positive action. Know how to embrace others. Know how to show up and demonstrate in a positive and loving way. Know how to manage anger in such a way that it makes a possibility, a cat, it is a catalyst for change. And so teach your children that they are catalysts for change and that as catalysts for change that they can make a difference in the world. They can be part of a transformed world. You see, teach them that they are their brother's keeper. Teach them that there is a path, a creating, that, that they can create a path to a world that really works for all. And teach them that we are not only a brother's keeper, but our sister's keeper. We are our planet's keeper. We are our society's keeper. And we do that by remembering and living the Beatitudes that Jesus shared with us over 2,000 years ago. Remember? Be merciful. Or be kind. Be understanding. Show compassionate care. Secondly, be meek. What does that mean? That means that you approach a situation with an open heart, that you don't have all the answers or your answer isn't the only answer. It means to teach our children that to be meek does not mean to be pushed down or to be none or be invisible. Being meek means that I simply understand there are many different answers and solutions to a problem, and together, by creating and bringing our minds together, our hearts together, and discuss together, we are able to really become a change in society. We are willing to listen to each other and honor each other. Poor in spirit. Jesus said, be poor in spirit. What does that mean? It means to understand that my ego is not in charge. Not to live through my ego, but to live through the power that lives within me. Teach your children that they are powerful because they're able to take positive and loving action. That when they turn it over to the Christ within them, to the I am within them, to the Jehovah within them, to the Buddha within them, when they turn it over to Allah, all will be well because they will be led through the power of unconditional love. And Jesus said, blessed are the persecuted. Hmm. We see that today, the persecuted. It's more visible to us than it's ever been before because of iPhones and iPads and all the other types of things that give us instant access to things that are going on. And thank God for that. That's a blessing because it's bringing to us upfront and personal what's going on in our world and what we don't want to happen. And so in order to bless the persecutor, what we do is we become peacemakers, not peacekeepers. Peacemakers, not peacekeepers. A peacemaker approaches a situation without anger. A peacemaker approaches a situation willing to listen to diversified ideas and thoughts. A peacemaker at the same time keeps in mind that each and every person is a child of God. Each and every person has the power to bring about change. The peacemaker doesn't give up on change. 
the peacemaker is able because of their attitude and because of their love and because of their determination, their strength, spiritual strength, to make a difference and to make change happen in loving and caring ways, in nonviolent ways. And that's what we're all about today. We are not to be indifferent. Teach your children that. We are not to be indifferent. And I would say there's been a generation that's done a pretty good job of that because of what we're seeing today with our young people. You know, being a father can be a difficult role at times. But I would be remiss if I did not mention the challenge of our black fathers, our African-American fathers. There are many in our ministry who have wonderful, loving relationships with their children, who have brought them up with these principles in mind. But one of the things that we do know, and we are very aware of today, is that there is a new Jim Crow. And it was written, a book written by Michelle Alexander, She's an activist, she is a lawyer, she is an author, and in 2010, she wrote a book called The New Jim Crow. And it started to bring attention to our penal society and to the big business that running penitentiaries and making sure people are incarcerated in them has become. She wrote, that Americans are ashamed of their racial history and therefore avoid talking about race, even class. I see that changing, and she may have been the catalyst for that change. Americans really do want to believe, and I have felt this way myself, that everybody is capable of upward mobility, given enough effort on his or her part. That is the dream of white privilege. That is a misunderstanding that everybody has the same opportunity to bring themselves up and to make change in their lives. It can be done, but we have to be role models. We have to help that move along. You know, a large percentage of our African-American dads today are in prison. 33% of African males have the possibility of being in prison, are in prison, are in parole. 33%. That's a staggering number. It's gone down a little bit recently, but not significantly. And what we're beginning to understand is that we need a change in our justice system so that every person can be the dad they want to be, so that every person has the opportunity not to be imprisoned, but instead to live life freely. I read that it cost about $140,000 a year, give or take a few thousand dollars, to keep a person in prison. And I wondered, you know, on some of these drug charge charges where people are in prison, if that $140,000 over a three-year period were invested in that person, in their education, in reunification with society in a positive way, with reconciliation, money that's spent on all ways in helping them become good and wonderful, prosperous citizens. I believe that's what most everybody wants. And we have an opportunity now to see a change in our, justice, our social justice system, to see a change in our police departments, a reform. People are ready. Even our police departments are ready. Nobody wants to live in a negative manner. And so I welcome this opportunity to see and know that we can 
reinstitute black fathers with their children, that we can bring back a change that will be so significant because most young children that are black do not have a father presence in the home. It's not because people don't want to be there. It's because they can't be there in many cases. And so on this Father's Day, let's recognize the difference. And I would say to every father, including those that are black, that if you follow these principles, if you teach your children again, that there is but one presence and one power, and we have many names for it and many paths to God. They can honor each and every path. If you teach your children that they have that power within them to live life fully, if you teach your children that through the power of imagination and support that power, that they will imagine things beyond anything they can think about today as they grow. They will become not only imaginative, but visionaries. They will not only be imaginative, but they will be demonstrators of the highest caliber. Teach your children to renew themselves through prayer and meditation. And teach your children to take appropriate and loving action. What I think will happen is that each and every child today no matter their age, will feel the difference, will experience the difference, and will know without any doubt that their dad honors them. So let us come together, and as we do, and celebrate this Father's Day, we just love our children totally. And I want to say thanks, Dad, I know you can probably hear me or sense me in some form or fashion, even though you're gone. And I thank you for being a nurturing dad. And for each of you, find a way, even if you're not particularly happy with the dad you have, to allow yourself to say, thanks, dad. For every father teaches their children something, something good, something strong and something positive. So happy Father's Day. Thanks, Dad, and God bless you. And now at this time, we will move into this time of meditation. And through the power of meditation, we go to our heart level. And may the energy of this singing bowl touch your heart this morning. this morning as we come together. We do so for renewal. We do so to remember who we are and what we are. And so this morning, as you relax in the place where you are, whether sitting or standing or lying down, just relax and take a moment to step into harmony and balance. Be harmonious within yourself. Allow each and every cell in your body to feel alive knowing that each and every cell is doing its work to support you, to maintain harmony within you, to maintain balance within you. 
which we call health. No matter what you might be experiencing, I offer you this opportunity to feel health this morning, to experience health this morning. It's Father's Day. And as you experience this day, And loving yourself, go even deeper. And experience the dad that you knew and know. If there is a sense of pain, Allow that pain to be experienced in this now moment. And to know that through the pain that you release, that you grow. Experience Dad, your father, in a positive way. Your father may have been your mother also. Your father may have been someone like an uncle in the family, a stable force in the family. Your father may not have been present for whatever reasons. But allow yourself to heal that feeling of loss to experience thankfulness that you are alive, that you are present in this moment, that you are breathing and able to say yes, yes. And so now let's just take this time to go a little deeper, just to settle in and to affirm that the unconditional love within us can embrace our fathers, our dads in so many different ways. So in harmony, in love, in balance, we sit in the silence.
And I affirm for each of us that in the silence, we connect with the truth of our beingness. In the silence, we renew our perspective on life itself. In the silence, we can be honest with ourselves. In the silence, we are able to affirm the beauty of life itself the uniqueness of life and that our dads brought us into an opportunity to experience life. We give thanks for that contribution. And so as we go through this day, we remain harmonious. We remain in balance. We send out a we send out an, inten an intention to love unconditionally all that is. And so now, as we come back to this place, we do so connected connected at the heart level, renewed, renewed at the heart level, and ready, ready to step out into life itself.